friends welcome back so as promised I'm continuing with part two regarding Israel Saudi Arabia and what does the Bible say about the end times and why are these regions very important well we know why Israel is important but Saudi Arabia hmm but are you ready to seek understanding of the end times friends as foretold by the prophets of old in the Holy Bible well, I welcome you to join me today as we delve deeper into the important subject of Bible prophecy. Beginning my presentation today, let's talk about this particular development. Now, let me just scroll up. Saudi Arabian government has announced plans to build a 400 meter high, yes, that high, cube shaped skyscraper named Mugab which comes from the root word of Gaba, the cube. It's like the mother cube, as part of its Maraba downtown plant in Riyadh. So let me take us to our map. Let me see if I can find the map. So this would be the location. Well, I'm so glad that worked. Kind of lost myself in the tabs. I have so many opened. So this will be downtown Riyadh in the centre of the city, this development plan. So let's zoom out a little more. Where are we looking at? So there we go. There's the picture, the, um, the graphic of this city. Interesting. What do you think of when you see this picture, friends? <laughs> What's the first thing that comes to your mind? I'll tell you what I thought when I saw this and we're going to um, go through that today. Described as the new face of Riyadh, it will be built around the Mugab structure which will be one of the largest built structures in the world. The structure is huge, I mean it's a super tall skyscraper. It will become the tallest building in the city. The cube-shaped Muraba skyscraper will contain a spiralling tower. Now, <clears throat> my goodness, what is the Lord have to say? What does he have to say about something like this, friends? I believe the word of God tells us how the Lord sees this. Let me take you to the other picture that I um I brought up. You know, some people say to me, Mystery Babylon, Babylon the Great, you know, it's the Catholic Church, or it's the World Economic Forum, or it's Jerusalem in Israel. And nobody wants to talk about this. So that's the I guess the designer's perspective of what it would look like in its complete, completed state. Mammoth project, yes. It's a cube. Let me play the video. Let's check it out. I'll turn my screen, my mic, so you can hear what she has to say. All right, here we go. It's one minute, 46 seconds. In the future, our cities will be much more than just places to live in. The future is here and it's real. Introducing the new Maraba, the world's largest modern downtown. Designed with people at its heart. Helping make Riyadh one of the top 10 most livable cities in the world. And at its center, a new icon, the Mukar. Did you see that? Let me turn my mic around. So that to me <laughs> looks like a Tower of Babel, right? Yes? Am I alone? Are you with me? world's first immersive experiential destination, a gateway to another world, at a scale that's unprecedented and unforgettable, where you'll feel wonder, amazement, and your heart race. <laughs> 
goodness well 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 a gateway to another world eh there's the fascination in Arabia with cubes what is the significance of this friends I want to show you something hold on <laughs> what I saw when I saw this what I was reminded of let me just bring up my tongue hold on just a moment I'm jumping the gun here a minute, but I want to show you where I'm going with this. The New Jerusalem. Now, a lot of artists, a lot of Bible students have, according to the measurements listed in the Book of Revelation, have come up with various artistic 3D animations or graphic um, illustrations of what this city would look like if it were to be present on the earth today. The New Jerusalem, the holy city, is absolutely huge if we go by the measurements given to us in the Bible. So huge that this would be the region it would cover. Basically, the Middle East. It would cover the entire region. Why is that? Well, because remember, according to the Bible, the Greater Israel Project covers this much of the land. Okay? But fascinatingly, is absolutely humongous. Over two and a half million cubic miles, the New Jerusalem is huge. Beautiful city, right? Now, you know how the enemy likes to imitate everything that the Lord originates. <laughs> Satan comes along and does an imitation. <laughs> because he can't originate anything he's the father of lies that's the the best that he can offer the world the father of lies is producing lies now remember as i go along in this presentation today we're talking about the system the religious aspect of this worship in islam we're not demeaning the people they're in darkness they don't know any better but those of us who walk in the light, we're able to see. Can you imagine walking in the darkness? How are you supposed to make anything out? It's very difficult. In fact, it's impossible. Yes. So let's be mindful. So I've got some images up here to show you. Mecca, Gaba, and also that huge structure that is envisioned for the future city of Riyadh, a massive cube looks just like a depiction of the new jerusalem coming down if you look at the biblical artists work about the new jerusalem city this is not anywhere as big as the new jerusalem but it's still a mammoth project yes i want to go through a series of videos um not videos images to share with you there's a location of where it would be Mugab. We know down here, Mecca is where Muslim pilgrims go to to worship every year in the millions. So this land, very interesting how it's nothing but pagan idolatry. But of course, we know that those who believe in Islam reject that notion. As I was getting this presentation ready today, I was looking at some interior images of what's inside the Kaaba, what's inside the cube. And I'm not kidding you. I was looking inside and I saw these images of the three pillars. Here's a close-up shot of inside. This is showing two pillars inside. And as you can see on the top, across 
or hanging on the pole are lanterns or incense containers. Incense. So this is obviously a worship place, offering up incense to their God, right? But there are these three pillars that are inside. And what came to mind when I saw the three pillars is that here we have three objects. Now, bear in mind, this is my opinion. This is how I perceive it. I asked the Lord for discernment to show me how he sees things. I could be a bit sketchy. I could be a little rough around the edges, but just stay with me. There's a point to this. <clears throat> So I'm looking at these three pillars and the first thing that came to mind was in history past there was historical accounts of these three deities pre-Islamic deities Al-Uzza, al and Manat If you look above here you can see a star above this one the Sun and above this one here the crescent moon there was evidence of worship of these deities pre-islamic era in the region today that will be called I guess Edom Petra southern Jordan northwest Arabia three of them Oh, that noise was so loud. Somebody's car alarm going off. In the depictions of these three deities, female deities, or what they would call them in those days, goddesses, there's a beast with one of them. Here's another image here. You see that beast? It's like the harlot riding a beast. Huh. I don't know. Is that a coincidence? You've got these three pillars, incense being offered up inside the Gaba. This also is a copycat, an imitation of the temple of the Lord. I've done a video about this some time ago. I don't have a visual aid to show you, but you know what the temple of God looked like. Let me just go to an image where I can bring it up. Hold on just a moment. The tabernacle, yes. This is images shown of the tabernacle of Moses and what it would have looked like in those days. It was basically the actual building, the Solomon's temple would have been a cube structure. There's not one here, there you go, there's one. It's basically a cuboid kind of shape, right? Okay. So the originator of the design came from the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And here we go, we've got some ancient imagery of what the tabernacle at the time of Moses would have looked like. I want you to focus on the details. And let's go back to the inside of the Kaaba. Now this is an islamicinformation.com.com website. Let's see what they write about this. Six important things to know about inside the Kaaba. Ever wondered about knowing about the things inside the Kaaba? Let me scroll up. The key of Kaaba. Did you know that the holder of the key to the Kaaba has been chosen by Allah since time immemorial? The key, very old, very large artifact. In the year of the conquest of Mecca, precisely in the year 8 Hijri in the Islamic calendar, Muhammad entrusted the key to the Kaaba to Uthman bin Abi Dalla, who was the descendant of the Shabi family had also guarded the key before the entry of Islam into the world. The key which is made of metal 35 centimeters long was then kept for generations by the Shabi family to this day. Anyway, that's not what I want to talk about. There's a marble 
inside the Kaaba. Does anybody ever wonder why these things are there? I'm that kind of person. I like to ask why, but why? <laughs> why is it that way? There are not many things inside the Kaaba. One of the items inside is a marble box which is located to the right door of the Kaaba. Right? You see that? Check out the incense, the lanterns hanging up there at the top. And the pillars, of course. The box is used to store oils and perfumes that are used to wash and clean the inside of the Kaaba. So there is anointed, this place, anointed with oils to the God whom they venerate, Allah. To the north of the Kaaba, there's a door called the Door of Thoba, which is made of selected wood and covered with engraved gold and silver. Tell me your thoughts in the comment section or in the live chat as I share this with you. I'd like to know what you're thinking. I wonder if we're on the same page. Muhammad's prayer place inside the Kaaba. When you enter the Kaaba, you will see a unique pattern resembling a sajda or the prayer rug. And it's marked there. That rectangle on the ground it's said to be the place where Muhammad was um, allegedly found to be praying inside the Kaaba at that precise location so we've got these three pillars we've got incense at the top and we've got this box here full of the anointing oils and the location of the prayer yes that location there was the place of prayer Muhammad when he entered the Holy Kaaba when Mecca was conquered. Al-Multazam. Al-Multazam is the designation of the area that is in the middle between the left side of the Kaaba door and Hajar al-Aswad, which is the black stone. At the corner, this is, I mean, the irony, the cornerstone at the corner on the east side is an object which is encased to resemble something that I find even ashamed to mention. I've spoken about that at length in my other older messages. Please check that out. For decoration, these oil lamps and vessels are made. Incense and perfume are sometimes found in them and the arrows point upwards. So clearly, in the sight of the Lord God, think how he thinks, friends, for a minute. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not like our thoughts. They're much higher, right? So we've got to step outside our flesh for a minute and ask the Holy Spirit, show me what's going on here. So there is incense being offered up to a deity or deities represented by three pillars. It's possible that those three pillars are those three ancient deities of old. There's a lot of research done on this. I'm not the only one, so don't worry. You can go and do your own research. There's so much written work on the three daughters of Allah, Manat, Uzza, and Allah. The sun deity, the star deity, and the crescent moon deity. And I'm looking at this today, and I say, wow, nothing's changed. You see, in the eyes of the Lord, these three pillars represent worship. <clears throat> these pillars are being venerated, and I believe they're connected to these deities here. Manna, the pre-Islamic goddess of time, fate, and death. There's an article written here by somebody called Badr Saab. While researching for my roots and the beliefs of my ancestors, those who lived before Islam, I came across an interesting triad. Wicca taught me that the goddess has three faces to represent womanhood's three stages, maiden, mother and grown. Although I'm no longer Wiccan, it was a nice surprise to discover an Ara Arabic pre-Islamic triad with this same concept. Imitation. Counterfeit. Remember? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's always a counterfeit in the spiritual world. The three daughters of Allah, Al-Uzza, Allah, and Manat, are respectively the maiden, mother, and crone of the pre-Islamic world. 
After years of invoking the Greek goddess Hecate, I previous I obviously gravitated towards Manat, the old one, the crone, the goddess of fate, time and death. But who exactly is she? It is said in pre-Islamic belief that Allah, God in Arabic, which is not true, means that's the actual name of the God of Islam. The word Allah doesn't mean God. Because when you take the confession of faith in Islam, you have to say the name Allah. You don't say there is no God but God and Muhammad is his prophet. You have to say Allah. So Allah is the personal name associated, identified as the God of Islam. It is said in pre-Islamic belief that Allah left his active role in the universe after creating it, becoming a passive spectator from a distance in order to rest. His three daughters became intermediaries between humankind and Allah, who would only act in desperate times. Man that sometimes spelled Mana is believed to be the first one Allah created and so the oldest of his daughters. Some time ago, this British author, publisher called Salman Rushdie, um, published a book, The Satanic Verses. He's still paying the price for that today. What he did in that book was simply disclose those Quranic verses that were in their own book and brought it to the world's attention. Ever since then, those verses have been scrutinized, um, critiqued, rejected by the Islamic world. And you can, you can basically understand that this damage control that Satan has been doing, because I'm going to say something that some Muslims are going to be so offended. But you've got to understand what I mean from a spiritual aspect. I believe in the God of the Bible. Now, the enemy of God is out there working overtime to counter attack, especially after Jesus Christ and his resurrection. So Islam is a counter-attack. It is damage control. The whole system is damage control, Satan orchestrating his revenge. So you'll find similarities, but you'll find that they're counterfeits. There's antichrist themes in Islam, and they directly challenge the truth of the God of the Bible, directly, with precision even to the details of the worship and the manner in which they are worship, they worship their God, the structure included. Here is, I just didn't want to read all of that. Trust me, it's difficult presenting this dark information with you. Here's a depiction of Mecca in the olden days. Huh. Now, ask yourself an honest question. What does that resemble, friends? Do you see what I see? It resembles the old tabernacle in the time of Moses. I've got another image here. This is a blog, WordPress, by somebody who's obviously spent a lot of time on his research, Cradle of Civilization, a blog about the birth of our civilization and development. And he's got a ton of information. If you just go through all of these hyperlinks here. Anyway, he wrote a paper on the destruction of a 1900 year old lion of Al Alat statue. So we're talking about this one here. Interesting for you to further explore. There are those deities again. Temple of Allah, Hatra, UNESCO World Heritage Site, Iraq. So when we talk about Babylon the Great, and I say it's the daughter of Babylon, a daughter of the harlot, of harlots, it's connected to Babylon, Iraq, goes way back to the Babylonian Empire. And so today, Islam is the modern version. It's a revamped system of the worship of ancient Babylon. 
This is ancient Babylon revamped, not the Catholic Church. <clears throat> Muhammad turned those idols into the daughters of Allah and turned Hubal, which is Baal, the highest ranking of all 360 gods worshipped in the Kaaba by the Quraysh tribe into the God of the Quran. Allah in all of her three forms was influenced by the Banat, which were the three daughters of Baal, the supreme deity of the Canaanites and symbolized light, rain and earth. You see this old picture here of, it's the artifact, archaeological artifact. So you have the sun, the crescent moon and the star. These deities were famous in this time, very widely worshipped, recognised as deities. Here they are again. Check out the beast. <laughs> I have to move on because you know why? I need to get to the scriptures. There's so much to share. I just put this all of these images together to share with you today. Nabataean Petra, you know when people, Christians especially, go to visit Israel and they uh, extend their visitation and they go to Jordan, Petra, to go and see this um, site of Petra and they go there and basically what they're going to see is a cemetery. It's basically a place where they used to worship the dead. Pre-Islamic goddesses Alat al uzza Manat. That image of the Kaaba in ancient days, if you go on the maps and you see what it looked like in the olden times, friends, I'm telling you, this is a copycat, a counterfeit instead of the tabernacle of Moses. Look at it. This is not the tabernacle of Moses you're looking at right here. This is an old artist rendition, an illustration of Mecca, Gaba. You see that? The mother of harlots. And here we have inauguration of the tabernacle. First step in evolution of Judaism, the Jerusalem post. Another image. Another image. Islam is a counterfeit. Exactly. To the T. A counterfeit. To the God of the Bible. To usurp his ways. His name. His people. And his heritage. Israel. Here's the video. Let's play this. Inside the Kaaba. Okay. <clears throat>
so that was showing us let me turn my mic around that was showing us the, the inside of Kaaba obviously and this worship of these ancient deities which are connected to Baal tells me that this ancient hatred of Baal against the God of the Bible is still thriving today is bigger than it was in the olden days you guys and it's connected to this region. It moved around in different places, it went to Iraq, even in Mesopotamia, including Turkey, Diana, the Aphrodite goddess that was worshipped, a star that fell from heaven. It's all connected. There's um, a connection between this black stone being an astro, what's the word? asteroid that came down from heaven and it's being worshipped today this is in the Islamic narrative they also say that Abraham and Ishmael built to the Kaaba so this connection this counter-attack to the Bible to the God of the Bible is blatant it's out in the open there's only one system in the world today that is challenging directly Jesus Christ and guess what Prophecy land is silent on it. Well, thankfully to people like Walid Shweba, who did a lot of work on this. His son, uh, Theodore, today, he doesn't talk about this now, but he talks about other things. There's Joel Richardson. There's also Zion's Hope channel. Check that channel out. And there's obviously me. Help us, friends, to get the word out so the church is aware that they're looking in the wrong direction and they need to pay attention. This is what the Lord has been warning us about. There's also Kingdom Covenant, Jericho's channel. Amazing content there. Please check it out. So this cornerstone, another blasphemous thing, aspect with the whole system of Islam is blasphemy. You have to understand this, you guys. This is an affront to the God of the Bible, the Holy One of Israel, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There is no God but the Lord God. There is no other Saviour but He. This is a direct open challenge to Christianity, to the land of Israel, to the covenants, the election. You understand, friends? In Saudi Arabia, I told you a little bit about this in my last video. Al Ula, which is like an extension of Petra. I mean, these niches, these garbas, these rocks are huge. And they have been worshipped. People have been worshipping idols in these places for centuries now. My Dain Saleh, Al Ula, you're going to probably hear a lot more about it in the future. It's also home to the archaeological site of Maiden Saleh, which in 2008 became Saudi Arabia's first UNESCO World Heritage Site, and where nearly a hundred rock cut facades of tombs pierce the cliffs and spectacular island like stacks of rock erupt in the desert fringes. These are idolatrous rock formations, they were carved out in order to be um, worshipped. Deities were attached to these rocks. Known as Hegra to the Roman writer and Al-Hij in the Quran, the multitudes of names for this site in northwestern Saudi Arabia is entirely apt for a city that was the nexus for trade routes to the Red Sea, the Arabian Peninsula and the Far East. And I believe this is the location where Islam originated from. I spoke about this two years ago, three years ago. Built in the first century BC and the first century AD, this cosmopolitan city, cosmopolitan, was home to the Nabataean civilization. I believe Muhammad was a Nabataean. In the kingdom, southernmost settlement. So Mecca today is just an extension of what this place is and what it was. It's an extension of it. Babylon the Great. 
um, a shocking this cuboid structure that is replicating, replacing instead of the way the Lord does things. You see, his tabernacle was a square object. Solomon's temple was square in a sense, rectangular, but you see the similarities were there. These two kingdoms, the Hashemite kingdom and the house of Saud, there's a book if you're interested in purchasing. Here's an abstract regarding it. Obviously, you can do research online about it as well, but they're connected. Edom is bigger than Jordan today. This article explores the question of the legitimacy of the Hashemite kingdom in Jordan. Jordanian public opinion on one hand recognizes the regime in large part because of its ge genealogical descent from Prophet Muhammad. They, they say they've got direct lineage to him by blood. Radical Islamic organizations on the other hand reject it for its ties to the West and Israel. The article examines how the views of Islamic movements towards the Hashemite regime have evolved. The Muslim Brotherhood originally recognized the legitimacy of the Hashemite regime, but changed that position in response to Jordan's 1994 peace treaty with Israel. Al-Qaeda and ISIS have never recognized Hashemite rule as legitimate. They have tried to undermine its political stability and indeed overthrow it, rejecting its secularism and cooperation with Israel and the West. The terrorist organizations, Al-Qaeda and ISIS, find support and sympathy among Jordanians, but as they committed more terrorist attacks, the Jordanian public has turned away from them and its support for the Hashemite regime has grown. But there's a rivalry between the Hashemite kingdom and the Saudi Arabian kingdom. It's got to do with Mecca. It's a rivalry. You see? This is all relevant information because when we get into the scripture, you'll understand why some regions are mentioned, especially the book of Jeremiah. And when we read them, we skip over them because it doesn't have any meaning to us. We can't connect anything. We have no, um, there's no relevance for us because our mindset is Western. But if we just remove those glasses and put on the Middle Eastern glasses, it all begins to open up remarkably well. Jordan Saudi Arabia relations. These are kings, right? The word of God speaks a lot about kings and kingdoms. Jordan Saudi Arabia relations are the relations between the Hashemite kingdom of Jordan and the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Jordan and Saudi Arabia are both Sunni monarchies, Sunni Islam. Jordan, along with Morocco, the only other non Arab Gulf monarchy in the Arab world, another kingdom has been invited to join the Gulf Corporation Council, an organization of Arabian Gulf monarchies. Historically, oopsie daisy, let me go back up. Historically, the Hashemite dynasty came to Jordan from the Hejaz, from Arabia, which is now called Saudi Arabia. So their roots, their roots were from Saudi Arabia. The Hashemites ruled Mecca from the 10th century until 1924 when the area was invaded by the House of Saud in the Saudi conquest of Hejaz. Map of 1967 land swap between Jordan and Saudi Arabia, the two cities of Aqaba and Man were part of the Kingdom of Hejaz between 1916 and 1925. In May 25, Ibn Saud gave up the Aqaba and Man districts of the Jaz and it became part of British Emirate of Transjordan. In 65, Saudi Arabian Jordan agreed to trade land, thus finalising the Jordan Saudi Arabian border. Jordan gained 19 kilometres of land, blah 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 blah. According to 2013 Pew Global Opinion Poll, 88% of Jordanians express a favourable view of Saudi Arabia, with 11% expressing unfavourable view, the most favourable opinion of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in the Middle East. After the elevation of Mohammed bin Salman to Saudi Crown Prince, relations have deteriorated over Saudi attempts to sideline Jordan. This is crucial for the end times because one of these 
kingdoms is going to win favor with Israel. I believe that kingdom will be Saudi Arabia. Their relations deteriorated over Saudi attempts to sideline Jordan in negotiations over the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Saudi Arabia is going to champion that conflict by providing a seemingly reasonable solution that all sides are going to be kept happy. That's what I propose anyway. Jordan's reluctant support for the Saudi position during the 2017-18 Qatar diplomatic crisis and limited involvement in the Saudi-led intervention in Yemen and growing Jordanian ties with Turkey. Saudi Arabia concluded an agreement with with government of Jordan to provide assistance, basically just shut up, take a load of money and, and put a sock in it. Right, that's what Saudi Arabia does, give them money. $50 million just to appease and to silence the critique coming out of Jordan. Now, I think I went through, I probably skipped through a lot of it. We started by looking at this. The Gaba, the pillars, and the deities. And we compared the remarkably, I mean, like for like, replacement of the worship of the God of the Bible, which is really shocking. When you think about it, when you look at the imagery, Tabernacle of Moses, of replacement. You know, I've said this before, you know, we talk about replacement theology, there's a cornerstone. Replacement theology, the original and the worst, is Islam. Islam is the ultimate replacement theology. In the book of Jeremiah, we've got the most detailed, interesting, oh my goodness, shocking revelations in the whole Bible when we talk about end times prophecies and Babylon are found in these few chapters in the book of Jeremiah. This is why I said I need to continue with my last message doing a part two. Because in order to come here, I wanted to show you where I'm going with it all. In Jeremiah chapter 49, it's very long, friends. I really urge you, please, my darling friends, please do your own study. Don't depend on me coming out, coming on and sharing scriptures and then that's it. You've got to continue on, take the baton and continue your race. You have to continue your study. You've got to dive in, dig deeper, explore, research, study. In Revelation chapter, let's have a look, where are we? Revelation 17, the detail about the scarlet, the scarlet beast, how they're connected. But the woman is in control, position of control. She is, she's got the reins in her hands, basically. The influence over the beast is directly coming from the scarlet woman. So this is why I say it's more complicated. The, the harlot is a city represented by idolatrous worship, luxury, royal city, wealth. It's the kingdom, but it's spiritual harlotry. It's um, spiritual adultery and everything is connected to Islam. It all came from this region, it's thriving in this region, it has its followers stuck in bondage. The nations, the Islamic world, are Islamic, so there's that connection, but yet they have this enmity against her, in many ways, Saudi Arabia. Since all this division after the world wars and what have you, the kingdoms, how they're divided, the lands were divided, split, and the autonomy of Islam as a system, a caliphate over the region was destroyed. So, this woman who gives the kings of the earth a drink to drink made of her fornication has them all enslaved to her. This is why they attack her. <clears throat> 
the beast that she's created is going to betray her, basically. Because the influence, the theology, the doctrine, the brainwashing, the system that the leaders of these, na of these nations are influenced by is rooted in Islam. So if we take out Islam from the equation, where's my map? If we take out Islam from the equation, okay, just imagine it, there's no Islam here. The region would be completely different. I mean, we're talking about monumental changes, drastic language, culture, religion, architecture, mannerisms, food, because everything is changed when Islam came. This was the beast that came and destroyed everything took over and really did took, take over so everything has changed so we have this harlot I'm all over the place i know bear with me so it's the mystery i know now why it's the mystery it took time for us to get here didn't it friends we had to go back in history and take a good look well what is this hatred what is it really all about and like i say and I've done videos on this. It goes back to ancient enmity between the serpent and the woman. Between Eve and the serpent. And from that moment on, there's this division in the bloodline. Enmity between two sides. Cain and Abel. Jacob and Esau. Isaac and Ishmael. And it goes on until the Lord Jesus and Satan himself, the son of perdition. So we've got this interesting situation with this woman who controls these beasts, the beast and their, and their kings, and their kingdoms has influenced them. So it's a lot more intricate. This, there's a lot more detail involved. You see, the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour's as kings of the beast, they have one mind, they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the Lamb. My goodness, they make war with the Lord. You see that? They make war with the Lamb, the Lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. Not only that, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations and tongues. And that's exactly how far the influence of the harlot spreads. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind and give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. In Jeremiah, let's, let's go through as much as we can in this wonderful book. Prophet Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. My goodness, what a burden he had. I don't know where to start. Has Israel no sons? Has he no heir? Then why does Milcom inherit God and his people dwell in his cities? This book will talk about the region surrounding Israel and the anger and the enmity that they have this rivalry against israel especially the land it's all connected to the land of israel you guys all of it the whole bible is about inheritance election and covenant and islam has come to take over all three to take over the election to take over the covenants and to take over the inheritance you understand? It fits like a glove. Right, let's move on. I've got my Bible in my hand here because I've got certain things highlighted. I think we should go there. Let's start at verse 7. Remember, I want you to read it in its context. So, where God brings judgment on these regions, including Ammon, he also spares a remnant. He always does this because he's good, He's faithful, he's merciful, he's trustworthy. 
Behold, I will bring fear upon you, says the Lord of hosts, from all those who are around you. You shall be driven out every one headlong, and no one will gather those who wander off. But afterward I will bring back the captives of the people of Ammon. Judgment comes, a sifting comes, and there's a remnant who have been purified who survive. It's the same rule and it applies to everybody, including you and me, including the judge. Judgment on Edom. Let's go on because the focus was Edom, Arabia, that region and Israel. What's the deal? That says the Lord of hosts. Hmm. Is wisdom no more in Timan? Oh, Timan. Has counsel perished from the prudent? Has their wisdom vanished? Flee, turn back, dwell in the depths, O inhabitants of Didan. For I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him. At the time of Jeremiah, Esau was dead and buried. But it's still significant in prophecy. The time that I will punish him, if grape gatherers, that's the tongue twister right there. If grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? If thieves by night, would they not destroy until they have enough? But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His descendants are plundered, his brethren and his neighbours, and he is no more. Where's my... Open, let me open that up for a minute. Let's have a look. <clears throat> Sorry, overlaying that across. Bozra, Timan, Didan. Wow. God is speaking directly to these people groups. And if you live here, or if you have any affiliation with this region, pay attention. Take heed. Let your widows trust in me. Look, leave your fatherless children. I will preserve them alive. And let your widows trust in me. For thus says the Lord, Behold, those whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have surely drunk. And are you the one who will altogether go unpunished? You shall not go unpunished, but you shall surely drink of it. For I sworn by myself, says the Lord, that Bozra shall become a desolation. That's Petra region. Southern Jordan, Northwest Arabia. Bozra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste and a curse. This was the region where those idols were worshipped, ancient idols, in those clefts of the rocks, carved out. These idols, these goddesses, Pre-Islamic Arab deities worshipped there. I have heard a message from the Lord, and an ambassador has been sent to the nations, gathered together, come against her, rise up to battle. Revelation 17. When the Lord makes the kings of the earth of one mind, he does it for the purpose that they will turn on the harlot. So the Lord will use his enemy against his enemy. Very strategic, militarily speaking. <laughs> right? To destroy her. But he completes the job when he returns, the Lord Jesus. He completes it. He will cleanse the land. In his righteous judgment, he will punish the evildoers. And he will set up his kingdom for the millennium, for a thousand years, right? That's how he makes his enemies his footstool. He rules over his enemies, who are the other nations around the world. And then when the thousand years are over, then a new heavens and a new earth will come. So this current existence will completely be gone. And then the new heaven and the new earth will come. And the new heavenly Jerusalem will come down and take over. So, for indeed I will make you small among nations despised among them your fierceness has deceived you the pride of your heart O oh, you who dwell in the clefts of the rock 
Do I need to bring up those images again? <clears throat> It's amazing to me how many Christians go and visit this place and I don't know if anyone's ever wondered. Is this biblically significant? Has the Lord mentioned anything about this place? Demonic stronghold. This is a highly demonic, demonically charged stronghold. But it's bigger than that region. It's wider. Let me go back to my map. Al-Ullah, that place I was talking to you about, which is an extension, an extension of Petra, is in Arabia, northwest. You see, this region is connected to Esau, to Edom. Do you understand now? Can somebody please say, yes, Sonia, the pennies finally dropped. The pieces are falling into place. I am seeing the bigger picture. This is why it was, it's, it's hard to describe this if, you, if you're not familiar with my content. To somebody who's new, first time listener, and you're like, wait, wait, what did you just say? Edom? No, but isn't Arabia not Edom? They're connected. Just like the kingdom of Jordan and the kingdom of Saudi Arabia are connected so this region is a lot bigger. I did a video some time ago called The Wilderness, Israel in the Wilderness. Oh my goodness, I might have to repeat that message. Let me let me just quickly write a note. I'm going to do it again. It's so important. Israel in the Wilderness. It's the same place, you guys, where the Lord, when he brought them out of Egypt and he brought them to the wilderness, Guess what? It's the same place. It's in Arabia. And when the Antichrist goes after the woman and her offspring, the Jews and the Christians, the remnant flee to the wilderness. And they're going to go back to the same place. All right, save it for another time. So the Lord is giving a description. Your fierceness has deceived you. The pride of your heart, O you who dwell in the cliffs of the rock, who hold the height of the hill. Though you make your nest as high as the eagle with the skyscrapers and their rock carvings, I will bring you down from there. Edom also shall be an astonishment. Everyone who goes by it will be astonished and will hiss at all its plagues. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighbours, says the Lord, no one shall remain there, nor shall a son of man dwell in it. Wow. Total destruction. Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord that he has taken against Edom and his purposes that he has proposed against the inhabitants of Timan. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their dwelling places desolate with them. The earth shakes at the noise of their fall. Oh my Lord. Wow. At the cry its noise is heard at the Red Sea. Come on you guys. The Red Sea. What have I been talking about? I showed you the island in Sudan, off the coast, across the Red Sea, and across that is Saudi Arabia. Turkey has leased that island for this time, for this time of this invasion that's coming. Such will be the destruction of this place, my goodness. The earth shakes at the noise of their fall. At the cry, its noise is heard at the Red Sea. We can't make the Red Sea to be any other place other than the Red Sea. Behold, he shall come up and fly like the eagle and spread his wings over Bozra. The heart of the mighty men of Edom in that day shall be like the, the heart of a woman in birth pangs. And not only that, the Lord brings judgment on Damascus. Judgment on Kedar and Hazor, again Rabia. Arise, go up to Kedar and devastate the men of the east. Elam. 
one of the kings of the beast? The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam. Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the foremost of their might against Elam. I will bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven and scatter them towards all those winds. There shall be no nations where the outcasts of Elam will not go. My goodness. But you see, after this destruction and the sifting, the Lord preserves the remnant. He has a remnant in that region. I will bring disaster upon them, my fierce anger, says the Lord, and I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them. I will set my throne in Elam, amazing, isn't it? And I will destroy from there the king and the princes, says the Lord. But it shall come to pass in the latter days, I will bring back the captives of Elam. That was Jeremiah chapter 49. Chapter 50 has even more information about Babylon. Now understand this, it has to be read with the book of Revelation. So we have to piece it together. What was already foretold in the Old Testament has just been compounded upon or elaborated in the New Testament. When the Lord Jesus gave um, John the vision of himself and what would happen in the end of times, there are themes that have been mentioned in the book of Revelation that have been revealed first in the Old Testament. So this is why we need to go back. Bel <clears throat> is re related to Baal worship and Babylon. This is talking about Islam and also ancient Babylon system. See, it's, it never ended, you see. When we think of bloodlines, they come and go, yes? in the carnal, in the flesh, they die and it's ended. But in the spiritual, it never ends, it continues. This is why people talk about generational curses in the spirit realm, they continue, they pass down. The word that the Lord spoke against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans, so the land of the Chaldeans is Iraq territory. Original Babylon, original Babylonia. Oh, let me go back to my aid. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. The land of the Chaldeans. Okay. This is where it was. Babylon. The Tower of Babel. It's all connected, you guys. Arabia today has just translated what was going on here. Transferred the worship system. And it is now even bigger. You understand? It's bigger than it was before. It's greater. Mother of harlots. Declare among the nations, proclaim and set up a standard. Proclaim, do not conceal it. Say, Babylon is taken. Bel is shamed. Merodach is broken. These are the idol deities of that region. The stronghold. Merodach is broken in pieces, her idols are humiliated. <clears throat> so much reading, my f oh my goodness, let me just take a sip of water one moment. <coughs> Thank you. Her images are broken in pieces. Out of the north, a nation comes up against her. Ooh, interesting. Which shall make her land desolate, and no one shall dwell therein. They shall move, they shall depart, both man and beast. In those days, and in that time, says the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, and they and the children of Judah together, with continual weeping, they shall come, and seek the Lord their God. The spirit of grace and supplication. Yes will be given to the house of Israel, the children of Israel, the children of Judah. They shall ask the way to Zion, with their faces toward it, saying, Come, let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that will not be forgotten. Wow. Amazing. My people have been lost sheep. Oh, this makes me want to cry. Oh. The way the Lord loves his people, friends, we can't even fathom it. 
as much as he loves them. That's how fierce his anger and indignation is toward them as well, because of their rebellion, because of their iniquity, their rejection. You see, as much as he loves them, he also reserves the right to be indignif indigni in indig <laughs> have indignation <laughs> toward them. I was gonna say indignified, that's not the right word. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, that was so funny. Only he has the right. You don't. I don't have the right. He does. My people have been lost sheep. You remember in Isaiah? Let's go to Isaiah. The wonderful book of Isaiah. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. I'm so sorry about the background noise. It's very frustrating. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And what happens? He becomes like his sheep. He became one of us. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. <clears throat> he was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep, before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. So he understands exactly when the sheep are lost. He knows. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. <clears throat> All who found them have devoured them. And the adversary said, We have not offended, because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, the Lord, the hope of their fathers. <clears throat> Move from the midst of Babylon, just like in the New Testament, in the book of Revelation, the Lord says, <clears throat> Come out of her, my people. Yes? Come out of her. Of who? The harlot. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. He's been saying it from ancient times. Move from the midst of Babylon. Why? He wants to judge the harlot. Just like how the Lord brought judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah, the angels that he sent were waiting for Abraham and his family to vacate the place so the judgment could fall. Just so, in the same way, the Lord does not wish his people to have anything to do with this Babylonian system because judgment is coming and he wants to spare his flock. Go out of the land of the Chaldeans and be like the rams before the flocks. For behold, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country and they shall array themselves against her. From there she shall be captured their arrows shall be like those of an expert warrior. Amazing. So this modern day Babylon is connected to Babylon of the Chaldeans. <clears throat> but this northern army, which I believe is the northern front, 
that is being formed in the northern bloc, including Turkey, Azerbaijan, Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan, the wider region at north, forming the beast, <clears throat> are going to come against her. And they shall array themselves against her. From there she shall be captured. The arrows shall be like those of an expert warrior. None shall return in vain. And Chaldea shall become plunder. All who plunder her shall be satisfied. Because you were glad. Here we go. The Lord says why. He gives a really good explanation. Like I say, we should ask why. What's the reason? <clears throat> because you were glad. Because you rejoiced. You destroyers of my heritage. I would love to make a video with that title. <laughs> There's a system who are specifically designed to be the destroyers of the Lord's heritage. If you know the system, write it in the comment section. Because you have grown fat like a heifer threshing grain and you shall bellow like bulls, your mother shall be deeply ashamed. She who bore you shall be ashamed. Behold, the least of the nations shall be a wilderness and dry land and a desert. Because of the wrath of the Lord, she shall not be inhabited, but she shall be wholly desolate. Everyone who goes by Babylon shall be horrified and his at all obliques. Put yourselves in array against Babylon all around. All you who bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. The destruction is detailed. Cut off the sower from Babylon. Israel is like scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First the king of Assyria devoured him. Now at last is Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has broken his bones. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts. These are referencing the Antichrist as well as going back to the uh, times of old. Let me bring up another graphic. You see, this is why I love this illustration. It makes so much sense. We've got to look at past, present and future. The timeline of things. Because we live in, in the earth, in time, the word of God can be best understood when we, as best as we can, remove time from it. Because prophecy is superior than our present time. You, you see, that's why I say it's panoramic Bible prophecy. It includes past, present and future in just a few words in order for us to understand what's been said. Because we can read a portion of scripture and we say, well, that happened historically. But there's an element to the prophecy that has not yet been fulfilled. This is how it's best understood. Babylon, Persia, Greco-Macedonia, and then the Islamic Empire here. <clears throat> that took over all the regions of the previous three. Utterly. Completely. Not a little bit, but completely and more. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land as I have punished the king of Assyria. But I will bring back, <coughs> excuse me, the king, I will bring back Israel to his home. And he shall feed on Carmel and Bashan. You see, this is all future because the captivity of Israel, them being scattered, is not completely come to a conclusion there's still a people group so not completely united as a kingdom that happens of course when when does that happen you guys when the messiah comes right that is the only time it's going to happen the only time but i will bring back israel to his home and he shall feed on carmel and bashan his soul shall be satisfied on mount ephraim and gilead in those days and in that time, says the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought. They're going to be perfected. Do you understand? No more iniquity. Why? Because the Messiah, their saviour, paid for it. The atonement was done. But the, the moment of it being in its fulfilment is yet to come when the Messiah comes back to redeem his people. When all Israel shall be saved. Romans chapter 9, 10, 11. Right? The iniquity of Israel shall be sought. But they shall be none. You won't be able to find fault with them. 
and the sins of Judah, but they shall not be found, for I will pardon those whom I preserve. Hallelujah. What the Lord our God has done for us, done for you, done for me, us Gentiles who have been grafted in, he will do for his people. Go up against the land of Merathaim, against it and against the inhabitants of Pekod. I have yet to look up these regions. There's so much study involved in this. We could, you know, we'll have a lifetime of studying the Bible and there's still more to discover. Waste and utterly destroy them, says the Lord. Wow. The Lord, at the same time of talking about bringing back his people, is bringing a judgment on ancient Babylon, ancient Assyria. It doesn't make sense. Only if you consider these prophecies are past, present and future. I'll have to move on, my darling friends. There's more to share. <clears throat> Let's read some more. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe to them, for the day has come, the time of their punishment. The voice of those who flee and escape from the land of Babylon declares in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple. He's going to judge the nations for even thinking that they can replace his form of worship you see did you see that when God told Moses build a replica of the things I show you in the heavens do you think he was just joking is he playing games absolutely not God forbid I'm going to read that again. The voice of those who flee and escape from the land of Babylon declares in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple. Call together the archers against Babylon, all you who bend the bow, and camp against it all around, let none of them escape. Repay her according to her work. Same language as mentioned in the book of Revelation. Uh, let's go back to Book of Revelation. This is a long video, I can tell. I don't have a timer on it, but I can sense I'm getting there now. Uh, 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 uh. Revelation 18. Revelation 18. <clears throat> the destruction of Babylon here. All the nations drunk of the wine of her wrath, of her fornication, the kings of the earth commit fornication, the merchants of the earth become rich with her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins. This is what he've said before in the past. He's saying it again. Lest you receive of her plagues, for her sins are reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she rendered to you and repay her double according to her works in the cup with which she has mixed mixed double for her in the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously in the same measure give her torment and sorrow for she says in her heart i sit as a queen i'm no widow and will not see sorrow therefore her plagues will come in one day death and mourning and famine and she will be utterly burned with fire for strong is the lord god who judges her The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxurious with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning standing at the distance for fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city babylon not the one in iraq no it's a bigger and more wicked version but it's connected to babylon that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come, and the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn for her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore. In fact, in the scripture in Jeremiah, when it talked about 
the sound of her destruction will be heard at the Red Sea. <laughs> My goodness, look at that. To hear, to literally hear the sound of the destruction that would take place here. Makes sense. Again, perfect precision, which is how Bible prophecy ought to be. Repay her according to her work. Just what the book of Revelation just said. According to all she has done, do to her. Repay her according to her work. According to all she has done, do to her. Render to her just as she rendered to you. And repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. So there is this bizarre, androgynous, female, mis mis mystical thing about this entity. The harlot. I sit as a queen. Interesting, the language is used. Not I sit as a king. You see, the king is the Antichrist. The one who wants to usurp the true king of kings and the lord of lords, King Jesus. The king of Babylon is the Antichrist. But you've got this entity who considered herself a queen. I sit as a queen. Oh my goodness. Only the Lord knows the, the intricate details, friends. Let's pray and ask him for wisdom. She's been proud against the Holy One of Israel. So think about in history, this ancient idolatrous worship, how it's related to Edom, how it's related to Esau, the Edomites, Jordan. It's all related. Behold, I am against you, O most haughty one, says the Lord of hosts, for your day has come, the time that I will punish you. The most proud shall stumble and fall, no one will raise him up. I will kindle a fire in his cities and will devour all around him. The children of Israel were oppressed, along with the children of Judah, all who took them captive and held them fast. They have refused to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. Islam holds the nation of Israel hostage today because of Jerusalem, the Temple Mount, the election, you guys. Isaac, not Ishmael. Jacob, not Esau. There's an enmity there. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He will thoroughly plead their case that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. This judgment is so profound it goes on he, he says again it's going to be worse than Sodom and Gomorrah no one shall reside there no son of man dwell in it they shall hold the bow and the lance they are cruel and they shall not show mercy their voice shall roar like the sea they shall ride in horses set in array like a man against you O daughter of Babylon who gave birth to this entity Babylon the king of Babylon has heard the report about them and his hand grows feeble. Anguish has taken hold of him, pangs as of a woman in childbirth. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the flood plain of the Jordan against the dwelling place of the strong, but I will make them suddenly run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may point over her? Who is like me? Who will arraign like me? And who is that shepherd who will withstand me? Hallelujah. Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord that he has taken against Babylon and his purposes that he has proposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he will make their dwelling place desolate with them. At the noise of the taking of Babylon the earth trembles and the cry is heard among the nations. Oh my goodness, friends. There's more. We have to go and read further the wonderful book of Jeremiah and if you continue... To read on in Jeremiah chapter 51, this details more 
of the destruction of Babylon, the utter destruction. <laughs> There's so much information, friends. Let me take you to this particular verse, verse 6. <clears throat> Here we go. The Lord is warning to flee Babylon again because his destruction will be so absolutely utter. He wants to preserve the remnant. He gives grace continually, mercy all the time. Flee from the midst of Babylon and everyone save his life. Do not be cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. What time is this? This is the time of the end. That's why Revelation speaks about it. He shall recompense her. This is the time of the Lord's vengeance. Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunk, the nations drank her wine. You know, it's absolutely absurd. Scripturally, biblically, impossible for people to attach this entity to Israel, Jerusalem today. No, totally misunderstood the heart of God. I'm sorry to say that. Is Israel, modern state of Israel today, committing works of harlotry? Uh, yeah, absolutely, of course. Just like every other nation on the earth. Is the modern state of Israel today, ashamedly, um, a champion for gay rights? Yes, like so many other countries in the world. If the Lord judges those nations for their wickedness, do you suppose he will withhold judgment on Israel? Of course not. You see, the Lord's judgments are so severe. His chastisements that he's continued to do from ancient times never changes his ways. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. However, there's a specific destiny, a glorious future for Jerusalem, for Zion. Glorious. I spoke so much about this in my old messages. It's one of my favourite subjects. And I'll debate anyone if ever I wanted to, which I don't. Because I think debates are a waste of time. Let's read on. Babylon has suddenly fallen and been destroyed. Hmm. So with this cup, the nations have drunk. They get crazy. There's no way to heal her wounds. She would have been healed, but she's not healed. Forsake her. Get out of Babylon and let us go everyone to his own country. Arabia today, for example, has over 2 million Christians in the country working to build the empire, the kingdom of Arabia full of foreigners full of foreigners slaves workers forsake her and let us go everyone to his own country for her judgment reaches to heaven and is lifted up to the skies the lord has revealed our righteousness come let us declare in zion which is in jerusalem the work of the lord our god there's the stark contrast again you have zion over here and you have this harlotry on the other side they're not one and the same they're two different entities make the arrows bright gather the shields for the Lord has raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes Iran Azerbaijan territory Kurdish territory the spirit of the kings of the Medes for his plan is against Babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance for his temple. Set up the standard on the walls of Babylon, make the guard strong. <clears throat> for the Lord has both devised and done what he spoke against the inhabitants of Babylon. So we can have assurance that the Lord is absolutely in control. He's both devised and he's done what he spoke against the inhabitants of Babylon. Check this language out. O oh, you who dwell by many waters. So we know this isn't Babylon of old. It 
is more inland, not surrounded. We have the Persian Gulf here. But if you look at Arabia, how many waters are they, are they surrounded by? The Persian Gulf, the Gulf of Oman, the Gulf of Aden, the Red Sea, surrounded by many waters, right? O oh, you who dwell by many waters, abundant in treasures, your end has come. The measure of your covetousness, the Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, surely I will fill you with men as with locusts, and they shall lift up a shout against you. He has made the earth by his power, and established the world by his wisdom, and stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he utters his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. Hallelujah. He causes the vapours to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings for rain. The Lord is declaring his glory. He is God, and there is none like him. So despite them wanting to make this heaven on earth, which is really what it is, it's a counterfeit to the new Jerusalem. God is not going to have any of it. They are futile, a work of errors. In the time of their punishment, they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the maker of all things, and Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Hallelujah. You are my battle axe and weapons of war, for with you I will break the nation in pieces, with you I will destroy kingdoms. With you I will break in pieces the horse and its rider. With you, my battle axe, Israel, Jacob. And I will repay Babylon and all the inhabitants of Chaldea for all the evil they have done in your in Zion in your sight. Do we summarize it? That's the reason <clears throat> for all that they have done, all the evil they have done. Behold, I am against you, O destroying mountain, the mountains of Esau, the Mount Edom, O Mount Esau, is the destroying mountain, who destroys all the earth, says the Lord. I will stretch out my hand against you, roll down you from the rocks, <laughs> and make you a burnt mountain. They shall not take from you a stone for a corner. My goodness, such will be the desolation. Prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes again. So we know this region is going to be invaded. Mostly by Iran. Azerbaijan could be there. Don't know. We shall find out. It seems like it. It seems like Iran and the Kurds will work together and form something together. Alliance. Friends. Who knows? But we can be sure. The word of God has said certain things must happen. And they will happen. <clears throat> Let the violence done to me and my flesh be upon Babylon, the inhabitant of Zion will say, and my blood be upon the inhabitants of Chaldea, Jerusalem will say. Wow, you see why we need to read so much of the scripture. And here are mentioned of those idols. Shishak is taken. Her Babylon's become a desolate among the nations. The sea has come up over Babylon. She's covered with the multitude of its waves. I will punish Baal in Babylon. This is Baal. This is the deity, friends, that are connected to Islam today. My people, go out of the midst of her. Anyone who's still living in Arabia, please consider this. I know this is, uh, it sounds impossible to say. Like, how can you tell a people to leave a country? Who do you think you are? Well, the word of the Lord is saying, my people, go out of the midst of her. So, you know, in the next days, months, the few years that we have ahead, please make it a plan to leave that region. Where do you want to go? Friends, I don't know. All I know is that this destruction will be so severe and God is repeatedly warning people to get out of her. So just get out. I will bring judgment on the carved images of Babylon. The whole land shall be ashamed. <clears throat> The plunderers shall come to her from the north. These people here. The threat is still going to be north. Even if you say Iraq, even if you say modern day Babylon. It was always from the north. The trouble, oh, the wrong page. I'll show you that page in a moment. 
the trouble always comes from the north. As Babylon has caused the slain of Israel to fall, hmm? Islam today, so at Babylon the slain of all the earth shall fall. If all the earth gathers to this place, this modern Mecca, modern Arabia, then their doom is coming. You have escaped the sword. Get away. Do not stand still. Remember the Lord afar off and let Jerusalem come to your mind. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Let Jerusalem come to your mind. Because of Jerusalem's sake, because of Zion's sake, the Lord will bring swift judgment on the nations and save his people. We are ashamed because we have heard reproach. Shame has covered our faces. For strangers have come into the sanctuaries of the Lord's house. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. I will bring judgment on her carved images. And throughout all her land, the wounded shall groan. Though Babylon were to mount up to heaven, and though she were to fortify the height of her strength, yet from me plunderers would come to her. So they can build these modern skyscraper cities. I mean, there are so many in the region, right? There are so many. This is just one example. I mean, you know about the skyscrapers. The Jeddah Tower, the one mile high uh, Al Burj Tower. Just look them up in Arabia. Even Dubai. Look them up. The sound of a cry comes from Babylon. A great destruction from the land. So we know. We have to read these scriptures to read the book of Revelation, friends. Let's read this final word, um, portion. The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Mahasiah, when he went with Zedekiah, the king of Judah, to Babylon in the fourth year of his reign. And Sariah was the quartermaster. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that would come upon Babylon. All these words are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, When you arrive in Babylon and see it and read all these words, and a lot of it has come to pass. Babylon the old, by the Medes and the Persians, and then after that the Greeks came. A lot of this has happened in the past, of course. But the word of the Lord is giving us warnings in the same prophetic passages about the end of times. When the Lord redeems his people, the remnant, and sets up his kingdom. So obviously that wasn't at the time of Babylon the old. You see? Another way to see it is that history, history repeats itself in cycles until the final conclusion comes. Cataclysmic finale. O Lord, you have spoken against this place to cut it off so that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but it shall be desolate forever. Now it shall be, when you have finished reading this book, that you shall tie a stone to it and throw it out into the Euphrates. Then you shall say, Thus Babylon shall sink and not rise from the catastrophe that I will bring upon her, and they shall be weary. You know, I want to say that this is telling me a lot of the attack, the army that going to come out from the Euphrates and from the kings from the east are going to come from here to attack Arabia. And I've actually said that before also. It's on record. Friends, there's a song I want us to listen to. Let me go and find it. I'm going to close these windows now. Oh, hold on. Before I do, let me just remind you all about my new shop. For, um, for over a week now, I launched my shop on Etsy. It's basically a place where you, you just shop. It's, a lot of women use this site to be honest <clears throat> arts and crafts wedding gifts decor plants and that kind of thing and i got my shop on there you just got to type my name in there in the search and you'll come to this page this is my shop friends um my new updated items are at the top featured items and i've got some beautiful prints which are very popular on Etsy. Printable, downloadable artwork. This one I just designed and I launched it yesterday. 
and um, I'd like to develop this idea some more grafted in and that comes from the scripture the inspiration is um, from Romans the book of Romans grafted in Romans chapter 11 beautiful pieces of art there's that lovely jewelry piece there and the video is showing obviously the model wearing it and I just did this creation yesterday it's $3.99 for a digital download <laughs> not much really but what you can do with it is frame it and have it decorate your walls so beautiful I got that from the book of Proverbs that wisdom is better than fine gold amen anyway let's move on now enough of that oh my darling friends what do we <laughs> I mean this is just shocking to me when I discovered this the three pillars I'm like this nothing's changed just the same it's the same worship going on today whether the Muslims who go there to worship deny it or whatever this is what's really going on here you see this is an affront to the Holy One of Israel, which is neighbours to Israel, and right next door, Esau, an affront. May the Lord have mercy. Please pray, friends, pray. Oh, Lord God, help us. Seriously, help us. I'm going to put a wonderful song on now so we can sing. And as we sing, remember the faithfulness of the Lord our God. And I will be back again soon next week. I love you, you guys. May the Lord bless this message in Jesus' name and bless you, my darling friends. <sighs> Hallelujah. Not too loud, is it, friends? comes hallelujah There's no gun that you hold on There's no gun that you hold on 